It's so great to see everyone here tonight. My name is Sheena. I am the host on Civic Center TV, Channel 15, a show called The Splash. If you have never heard about us, go ahead and tune in sometime. We are a local news magazine show, and we really enjoy showcasing local businesses, local events, such as this one here tonight. We uh, have our show every Monday, starting at 5.30 p.m. Make sure and tune in. Uh, we're delighted to be here tonight to honor some really special people throughout the evening. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and call up the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce President Deb Spencer. She's also the Director of Clinical Operations and Emergency Services at Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital. Deb, if you can go ahead and make your way up here now. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is such a great event. It's something that I look forward to every year. It's just so inspiring to come to this event. Um, so I'd like to welcome you to the 12th annual um, Key to the Townships Award Dinner at the magnificent Shenandoah Country Club. They always do such a great job. It's really an honor to have an opportunity to address you this evening. Um, it's a very special evening. We're not only recognizing the successes of businesses and individual community members who have made special contributions, but it's also about learning from them, from their exemplary performance, and how they are ensuring that the spirit of enterprise and community continues to evolve and thrive in West Bloomfield Township. I'd like to recognize some of our honored guests in attendance tonight. Um, Senator Mike Kowal and his, and his legislative assistant, Lynn O'Brien, and I don't see State Representative Clint Kesto, but I think he may be coming. Um, West Bloomfield Police Chief Michael Patton. Deputy Police Chief Kurt Lawson, <laughs> West Bloomfield Clerk um, Deb Binder, <laughs> our West Bloomfield Township Supervisor Steve Kaplan, <laughs> our Treasurer Deb Weingarter. I'd also like to thank um, Beaumont Health System. They are the premier key to the Township Award sponsor, uh, Charlie Langton from Fox 2. You know what, Charlie, I'll be honest with you, I'm happy I precede you because when you get to this microphone, it's magic, right? So I, <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I don't wanna come after you. Um, CCTV for their support of this event, not only this event, but all the events that occur here in West Bloomfield. Uh, of course, to Shane Pilska for plant, from Plantera for the beautiful centerpieces. Audrey Ryskam, she is a member of the uh, chamber. She did the awards banquet program book. Uh, it's just awesome. And everybody who worked on this awards dinner, um, especially Kelly Woodley. Um, last but not least, and most importantly, um, our executive director, Susan Levine, who remains to me, yes, absolutely. <clears throat> she is the, the heart and soul of this chamber. Um, Suzanne has done ex an excellent job of strengthening the chamber's relationships with our township and our community, and she's been instrumental in leading the chamber in various programs which support and promote our membership and our community. Suzanne, would you please come up here? Um, we just have a a gift for you as a token of appreciation for all that you do.
you guys have to host for pictures of the floor? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And so I apologize, I was remiss. I need to thank one other person, and that's Don Johnston. He is a longtime commercial photographer, and he's doing our candid photography tonight. Um, he is a new member of our board, and um, so thank you so much. So finally, I'd like to introduce um, Constance O'Malley. Um, she is from Beaumont Health, and um, as I said before, Beaumont is our Key to the Township Award sponsor. So before she comes up and says a few words, um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about her. Constance O'Malley is the president of Beaumont Hospital Farmington Hills, which is part of Beaumont Health. It's Michigan's largest health care system based on inpatient admissions and net patient revenue. In this role, O'Malley is responsible for strategic development, daily operations, and financial performance for the 330-bed full-service teaching hospital, as well as development of ambulatory sites that are connected to Beaumont Farmington Hills. Previous, she, previously, she served as the Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of Beaumont Hospital, Troy, that was for four years, where she was responsible for daily operations and ambulatory services. Prior to that, she served as Vice President of Surgical Services, Trauma, Transplant, and Ambulatory Services at Beaumont Hospital in Royal Oak, with administrative responsibility for the Beaumont Medical Center right here in West Bloomfield. Before joining Beaumont, um, O'Malley held a variety of leadership positions with Ascension Health, St. John Providence Health System and Detroit Medical Center, including Vice President of Clinical Services, Chief Nursing Officer, and Chief Operating Officer. She has, 30, she has more than 30 years of healthcare experience and began her career as a surgical nurse at Providence Hospital. She has been a fellow at, of the American College of Healthcare Executives since 2012 and serves on many nonprofit boards leading both the Oakland and Macomb County Medical Control Authorities as president. O'Malley earned her Bachelor's of Science in Nursing from Oakland University, and she received her Master's Degree in Health Services Administration from Madonna University. Please join me in welcoming Constance, and I hope you enjoy this wonderful and inspiring evening. Thank you. So as Deb mentioned, thank you very much. I also am happy to precede Charlie. So <laughs> um, thank you for having me here this evening. I am Connie O'Malley, president of Beaumont Farmington Hills um, and a new board member actually of the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce. So excited to be part of the team. It's a privilege to be here tonight to speak with all of you and I'd like to thank the chamber for the opportunity to, to congratulate this incredible group of honorees tonight that we will recognize in community excellence as well as the uh, Chamber Member of the Year. Our hospital has been affiliated with the Chamber since 1997, and Beaumont Health is proud to be a community partner and supporter, including being presenting sponsor for tonight's award dinner. This year, Beaumont Health proudly supported the Greater West Bloomfield Community Coalition and the Chamber, along with the recent Sharps Drive in cooperation with the Township. Beaumont Health, Michigan's largest healthcare system formed in 2014 and provides patients in com with compassionate and extraordinary care every day. We are a nonprofit organization. Beaumont offers eight hospitals, which includes Royal Oak, Troy, Gross Point, Dearborn, Taylor, Trent, and Trenton and Wayne, and of course, Beaumont Farmington Hills. Beaumont offers uh, 187 health centers, 5,000 physicians, one of which is here with us today, and more than 38,000 employees, all of whom contribute to the health and well-being of our residents throughout Southeast East Michigan and beyond. Before I talk about exciting things that are going on at Beaumont Farmington Hills, please let me briefly give you an update of Royal Oak. How many of you have, how many of you have driven by Woodward recently and seen some things happen in there? Um, in, in actually at uh, Royal Oak, um, we are continuing the construction on the hospital 
uh, Emergency Center, as well as the Woodward Corners by Beaumont, a retail development adjacent to the hospital, which includes a grocery store, five-story hotel, and an array of restaurants and other retail offerings, including Wall Burgers, the Boston-based burger franchise, and New Order Coffee, based in Detroit. These are the first retailers to secure space in the new development. When completed, Woodward Corners will offer retail offerings in an attractive setting that includes green space, landscape gardens, and community gathering areas. In, in June, the hospital will be celebrating one year anniversary with this proton therapy center where cancer patients receive state-of-the-art treatments options, especially those in tumors that are close to vital organs. This treatment approach offers less radiation exposure while reducing side effects. Just quickly at Farmington Hills, I just want to update you. Um, we are actually the second largest teaching hospital at Beaumont Health with 175 residents and 18 different accredited residency programs and fellowship programs. We offer an array of clinical services, everything from orthopedics, med surge, neurology, cardiology, including percutaneous coronary interventions. So those of you who have, are having a heart attack, we can open that artery and bring into the lab women's services and oncology. We offer specialty services also um, in cancer, da Vinci robot, emergency and trauma center, orthopedics, cardiology, lab, endo, and our imaging center. We're very proud of some of our recent awards. We were recently awarded um, our Joint Commission Accreditation, which was a big feat for us as we moved from HFAP to a Joint Commission Accreditation. Um, so terrific work on, on, on the part of our team. We are one of six Beaumont hospitals nationally recognized in US News and World Report Best Hospitals ranking for 2017. Beaumont Hospital Farmington Hills was regionally ranked as high performing for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and heart failure. We also achieved some Blue Cross uh, and Blue Shield and Blue Care Network designations over the last year. Um, those are in the areas of cancer, obstetrics and gynecology, uh, as well as our, we were honored with the Program Support Award um, by Gilda's Club Metro Detroit. So lots of exciting things happening. The, but the most exciting thing I want to update you on is we are actually in the process of building a $160 million addition, and again, uh, really changing the face of our hospital um, with all that we're doing on the campus. And just to give you an idea of what is all that, we are renovating our emergency center, so we're moving from about 33 bays to 58, so we're doubling the size of the emergency center. We are adding 80 private patient rooms, uh, state-of-the-art recovery rooms, private uh, critical care rooms, as well as our, a new infusion center and an observation unit. So big project, uh, 473 parking deck, as well as a continued focus on our patient and family-centered care, which, are, which is our focus for our patients on the hospital, at the hospital. Our hospital is the largest employer in Farmington Hills, and we employ about 250 people, and we provide all services, again, that I mentioned uh, previously. Beaumont continues to be a market leader, um, and we are using our success to invest in our most important assets, which is our people and our facilities and services we provide. As a health system, we also are discussing our role with key social issues throughout the community, which is really uh, major health risks like diabetes, obesity, and heart health. We offer screenings and education related to these topics throughout the Farmington Hills community, including Walk with a Doc and financial support and participation in the Farmington Farmers Market, which is this Saturday, so hope to see you there. We also provide the community and safety emergency preparedness classes, such as Stop the Bleed and Distracted Driving classes. So in closing, I'd just like to thank you again and thank the Chamber for this opportunity to be part of the community and to allow me the privilege to speak to all of you this evening as in, in such an uh, uh, exciting event. Congratulations to the winners tonight, and thank you very much. So before I leave the stage, I actually have the pleasure of introducing to you our MC for this evening. His road to Fox 2 didn't just happen overnight. It was actually take, took a long time and lots of twists and turns, hard work, and a little bit of luck. He, his real job is he's an attorney. He's been practicing law for 25 years and has his own firm 
and has tried many cases in multiple areas over the years. He has represented many criminal cases and actually finds the criminal cases to be more interesting than the civil cases. Criminals just have so many stories to tell. While he was on the radio, somebody at Fox 2 News heard him and thought he would make a good legal analyst. He eventually became a regular daily com com commentator during the Stephen Grant murder case in Macomb County. He is a winner of four Emmys and three Wade McCree Jr. Awards for Excellence in Legal journal Journalism presented by the State Bar of Michigan. He designed the Michigan Quarter. He is a big collector of Michigan art, a huge Beatles fan, and he attended the Detroit Tigers fantasy camp and can't get enough of chocolate milkshakes. He is honored to serve as a trustee of the Michigan State University of College of Law. Go green, go white. He loves his job at Fox 2 and the professionals he works with there. Please welcome tonight's Fox 2 anchor, reporter, legal analyst, Dr. Doctor, Mr. Charlie Langton. Doctor, thank you. Doctor, how about that? Wow. I like that. Oh, well, thank you. By the way, five Emmys. That's five Emmys. No, no, no. Just. All right, please be seated. Thank you very much. Um, anyway, I love West Bloomfield. I don't know what it is about you guys, but uh, wow. How is everybody? Where's that Henry? Is this, what's, what hospital is this again? What? How'd you get stuck with the Kaplan's? That's all I want to know. I don't know. Anyway, everybody, uh, where are the chiefs? Are the chiefs here today? There, uh, they do, there's one chief, there's another, the assistant uh, deputy chief, right? Where'd he go? Oh, I don't understand. Last year you guys were sitting together. This year, I don't know, is there something going on in West Bloomfield? I need a story. I'm looking for a story, you know? Kaplan gave the story that I had to another reporter. To, oh, there is a story there? Hey, thank you guys so much. I love this. This is really fun for me to come over here because I know a lot of people, and it's just so much fun to be here. And... Um, uh, I, I just, I, I don't know, I'm having fun. We're, I'm not going to talk too much. I wanted to eat the food, and we have some honorees. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun today. Uh, Jim uh, Mano is here, trustee. Wow. That means they elected you, right? Oh, my gosh. Uh, your brother, Martin. Say hi to him. Nice guy. And then Dr. Jerry Hill. Where's, I just met him. Where is he? There he is. Superintendent of West Bloomfield Schools. You guys doing all right? Yeah. yeah, okay, you sure? All right, good, good. All right, anyway, I'm not gonna talk too much. Um, he Eat, and then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna have some uh, fun tonight, okay? This is a party, it's fun, and we're gonna make it that fun, okay? All right, back in a minute. Everybody, how's the food tonight? Any good? All right, if I could have your attention, please. Let's start this off. Um, I think uh, everybody can kind of finish up eating because we've got a lot to do tonight. And I understand tonight a lot of giveaways, a lot of giveaways. Dr. Hill, you, you're excited about that, aren't you? <laughs> Smile, Dr. Hill. This is a fun night. Okay. One thing, I love this tie. Can you stand up, Dr. Cleasy? Can you stand up? Look at that tie. I love that tie right there. Wow. Wow. Man. Who designed that tie, doctor? That was really good. The first award of the night. 
It's the Community Excellent Award for Business. Now, if you're in the Chamber of Commerce, this is the award you want, Person of the Year. But I don't understand this award at all. <laughs> so, Saad Abo is the winner. Okay, I'll just say that. But. And the, and, the, and, the, and the company is the ICE Corporation. Now, let me don't, stay, don't, don't go, not yet. Senator. <laughs> Senator. Senator Cole, by the way, everybody. Senator Cole, all right. <laughs> you know, these politicians really slow the process up. Anyway, so, um, so anyway, I don't understand this. He owns one of the largest ICE companies in the world, but I just don't get it. He grew up in... Iraq, where it's 80 degrees every single day. What this guy knows about ice, I don't know. Now, he tells me he's Chaldean, and when he came to the United States in 72, he bought a, a party store. Shocker. Shocker. He told me I could say that. It's okay. It's okay. Anyway, so one day at the party store, apparently, Power goes out, nothing happens, the ice doesn't get delivered, and all the stuff in the store goes bad. And they didn't replenish the ice one day, the next day, the next day. He said, forget about this, there's money in ice. And today, this guy who grew up with 80 degree weather, didn't even know ice when he came here, has over 3,000 customers. Ladies and gentlemen, the Community Excellence Award for Business, Sarabu, come on up. <laughs> uh, Charlie, thank you for that. That was great. Wow. <laughs> you know what? Um, I just want to say thank you for all this. This is a great, great community over here and everything else in West Moonfield. You, can't, you don't want to live anywhere else besides the city. And this is the best place to live in, this, in the beautiful country, the United States of America. I say that is great. Thank you. You know. <laughs> We were at an event together with Senator Conwell, you know, at, 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 all the way to Gross Point. I, I'm trying to, ready to get to go home and everything else. I'm trying to look for my jacket. We were wearing the exact same jacket. He took my jacket with my car keys. He went to Lansing. <laughs> I ended up taking an Uber going home that night and everything else. <laughs> you remember that? But it was a great event and everything else. But you know what? I just want to say thank you. <laughs> It was, it was kind of a warm night, and I, I knew I had the wrong jacket. When I put it on, there was keys to a Jaguar in it. <laughs> and I started looking for the Jaguar in the parking lot. <laughs> but, you know, after somebody explained to you what ICE was from coming from Iraq, um, you, made, you made a business out of it. You did... You, you, you made the American dream come true. That is true. And we had the Chaldean Chamber uh, up in uh, Lansing today. And there's two things that the Chaldeans bring when they come to the chamber. One, there's always very attractive women that come there, which is, <laughs> which is first and foremost on my mind. And the second thing is they bring food. Yeah. And uh, today I've had uh, my share of tabbouleh and hummus and you know, everything else that comes with it. But most of all, what they bring is their friendship and their love for America and the fact that they, uh, they've come to this country the right way, they've done everything correctly, and they've become part of the American fabric, which is woven into that flag that we fly over our houses and our Capitol building every day. So, said. You're one of the best. You've been one of the guys that have been with me from the beginning right on through, and we love you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. And I found the Jaguar, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You know what? I just want to say thank you. Thank you for Susan. Thank you for Terry for nominating me. I just want to thank my family, but I'll tell you one thing, my wife and my three sons and everybody, but it is true. 
we are, we, we, it is so important to say that it is, we are so proud to be in the United States that nobody knows until you leave the country, you see what you have over here. We are so blessed over here. We are thanks so much over here. The reason I named, we named the company U.S. Ice, it is the reason because of this United States of America. And I thank God every day I live over here. Thank you. That was very nice. I was worried the senator was saying he's had his share of Chaldean food. I thought he was going to say his share of Chaldean women, but it's not, not at all. <laughs> just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. These politicians really slow things down. Right, Dr. Hill? All right. Anyway, um, next award, the Community Excellence Award for the Spirit of the Community. And this is not going to a person, but an entire school. Is that traditional? You give it to a... No. We, we don't, no. This is new. A school. The whole school. All right, so the winner is the West Bloomfield High School. All right. All right. Dr. Hill, pay attention. All right, here we go. So some stats. They have a graduation rate of 98%, meaning they're all going to college. But here's the question. Mo this is a feeder school to... U of M and Michigan State. Now, I know this year which school they did more feeding to. So, by a show of hands, or just clap, how many people do you think students went to, uh, from West Bloomfield High School to uh, U of M? <laughs> Michigan State. <laughs> it's Michigan. Michigan, right? All right, beside that, all right, beside that, I won't hold that against them. Anyway, um, 30 of their students, I didn't know about this, 30 of their students, student athletes, signed a letter of intent to play college uh, sports, which is very unusual. And 20 of them are football players, is that right? Wow, how about that? They also have a program with Harvard, uh, and uh, they also have a very sophisticated mental health program as well. No doubt deserving of the Community Excellence Award for the Community, the Spirit, West Bloomfield High School. Come on up, Dr. Hill. Uh, thank you, Charlie. Um, of those 98 percent graduates, last year's statistics were that 80 percent went on to a, were enrolled in college after six months. So I think that's noteworthy too. The average for Michigan is 61 percent. So yeah, good job. Uh, thank you. We are pleased uh, and honored to accept this Spirit of the Community Award on behalf of the West Bloomfield High School. As the superintendent of West Bloomfield School District, I can attest to the fact that Pat Watson and his staff uh, and the students and the parents uh, exemplify excellence in all that it does day in and day out for the students and our community. Uh, the richly diverse student body has an extensive array of opportunities spanning the areas of academics, the fine and performing arts, athletics, student government, clubs, and community service. Academically, uh, they offer, we offer a comprehensive curriculum including 24 advanced placement courses, uh, a highly successful DECA, which is a business program, and, and in that program competition, we've had first place winners the last couple of years, and we always have students place, and we routinely send uh, just a large contingent of students from our DECA to the international DECA competition, and I think that's a very nice honor. West Bloomfield High School also has excellent and award-winning fine and performing arts groups. Uh, those groups offer students opportunities to experience success in the areas of choir, band, jazz band, orchestra, art, and theater. And if you have, ever have the opportunity, you need to get to some of those performances because they're, they're second to none, particularly the, the, the spring musical this year was, was fantastic. Um, somebody, we have a spring musical fan back there. <laughs> There, there, as, as alluded to by Charlie, there are numerous athletic opportunities. Over, uh, 
Over 30 sports, 32 to be exact, are offered at West Bloomfield High School. And, and I could go on about their wins and loss records, but the more important thing about that is the, the, from the principal and assistant principals, athletic directors and coaches, there's a strong emphasis on student athletes. And this is attested to by the exemplary grade point averages of all of the teams. And I think we had one team, I'm not sure which one, uh, had a, a really one of the highest GPAs uh, in, in the state this year. And what, what was that? Volleyball and girls soccer. Volleyball and girls soccer. So, so they, they are students first and athletes second. But 30 of them signed letters of intent, so that, that tells you something there too. In the areas of student government, clubs, and community service, West Bloomfield High School students also excel. Uh, the West Bloom High School student leadership teams create a positive school culture where students routinely engage in school and community life by making important contributions in the areas of student government, political leadership, business partnerships, civic involvement, and giving back to the community at large. West Bloomfield High School is truly a complete package, and it represents uh, and exemplifies the spirit of greater West Bloomfield. At this time, it's my honor to introduce our, uh, a person who sees the high school from two perspectives, uh, being a parent of uh, three alum and uh, the president of our school board, uh, Randy Sakwa. Thank you. On behalf of the West Bloomfield School District Board of Education, sitting over there at the table, some of us, it's an honor to be here this evening with all of you. Thank you so much for having us. My husband Stuart and I have raised three wonderful kids here in West Bloomfield, all of three which attended West Bloomfield School District as well as the University of Michigan. I'm confident, go blue, I am confident that their individual successes at U of M and now in their careers are due large in part to their amazing educational experiences and endless opportunities they received K kindergarten through 12th grade in the West Bloomfield School District. Our community, your community, is very fortunate to have a school district that strives to meet the needs of all students of all abilities each and every day. It's a challenge, it's wonderful, and our school district is up for it. My passion for our schools is why I continue to serve our community, and I could not be proud of the award that will be presented here tonight for the West Bloomfield High School and the true spirit of our community and their team. And I present to you the principal of West Bloomfield High School, Pat Watson. I feel like I'm at the Academy Awards and they're going to give me the hook. So I know we're over our time, so I do apologize. I will keep it brief. Our mission as a school district is to prepare students to be their best in and for the world. That's something we take dear to our hearts. In, our, in order for our students to be ready to serve their community and beyond, we need to make sure we give them the skills to handle adversity and the confidence to take on healthy risk. We are the first high school in the nation to adopt a mental health curriculum, one that teaches coping skills, empathy, peer-to-peer, -peer, and peer-to-adult relationships. No one else in this nation, as we hear all the debate about whether or not we should do something with the Second Amendment, we all know we can and should do something about mental health in public schools and that it should be mandatory now. <clears throat> we are also working in conjunction, conjunction with the Harvard College of Graduate Education and partnering with Making Caring Common. We were the only school in the state of Michigan selected by Harvard. Maybe you've heard of them. I heard they're pretty good. <laughs> and we all know they have great taste because they selected this community in your school system. This initiative encouraged students to connect with their community and engage in meaningful ways. These, outre these outreach programs include medical mentorship, which is a unique doctor shadowing program which some of you have been involved in, political, uh, political leadership, where students intern with government leaders and business owners, in STEAM. How many of you know what STEAM is? How many of you know what STEM is? STEM's great. You hear about it in neighboring communities. They have STEM. We have STEAM because in this community, fine arts are a priority. That's why we have three former students on Broadway right now. And no one else in Michigan does. I'm just saying. So, and I'll wrap it up. The Chamber of Commerce members who mentor our students are providing opportunities not found in a traditional school. This award highlights their generosity and the excellent partnership between our school district 
and the Chamber of Commerce. So on behalf of Laker Nation, thank you very much. some things with mental health right now. Um, when I was first elected to uh, the Senate, I had the opportunity to, and I was invited into uh, the high school, West Bloomfield. And I, I was very proud to go in. I was a little apprehensive because I didn't know a lot of people there. So I was asked if I wanted to go into a science class and take part of an experiment. I didn't realize they were gonna set me on fire. <laughs> And after going to Beaumont and getting uh, checked up, make sure I didn't have third degree burns, um, we had a lot of fun with the kids and the, and the, and the uh, instructors over there. And I knew at that point in time <clears throat> that I was dealing with a very special school district. I was dealing with a school district that excelled everything that uh, the state was requiring. They were way above and beyond. And I'm so fortunate that in our entire 15th Senate District that our schools, thanks to Dr. Hill and Sakwa and, you know, <laughs> you know and, and the rest of the gang over there and, and your leadership in the high school, I'm able to hand out these awards. And, and sitting from my seat in Lansing, I can honestly say that uh, West Bloomfield is in the top tier of all the schools in the state. So congratulations on your award. <laughs> Steve Kaplan was supposed to come up, and I, I keep saying Republicans and Democrats can't work together. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, this Senator, would you like to say a few words? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> About Charlie, I found out Charlie's going to moderate a debate, and uh, the first words out of my mouth was, oh, God. All right, how about a big round of applause? Yes. All right, let's, our next honoree, uh, Lisa Kaplan. She is very, very accomplished. University of Michigan, bachelor degree, master's degree, works at Henry Ford. She coordinates the elementary school substance abuse education program. I mean, she is really something. There's, nobody is perfect. That's the. <laughs> but she's pretty close. I asked him, what was our first date? I was just curious, you know. Steve thought about it. They had ice cream, first date. Isn't that nice? What kind of ice cream? Chocolate almond ice cream. Was that right, Steve? Isn't that nice? I said, what about the uh, second date? I'm Jewish, I can't tell you that, so I don't know what, I don't know what that means, I don't know what that means, I have no idea. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, you know Lisa Kaplan, and uh, if you don't, you're gonna get to know her more. I mean, very accomplished, except for Steve. No, no, everybody with Steve. Ladies and gentlemen, the Community Excellence Award for Health and Wellness, no doubt, Lisa Kaplan. So hello everybody. I want to thank Suzanne Levine and the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce for this award. I really appreciate it. For those of you who don't know, Maple Grove Center is the Henry Ford Health System Chemical Dependency Program in West Bloomfield. We treat adolescents and adults who have alcohol and other drug problems as well as mental health problems. Um, it's a wonderful place to be. 
I really appreciate my job. I absolutely love it. I truly believe I have the best job in the world, but Steve Kaplan would challenge me on that one. Um, so I want to introduce to you the, my colleagues who are here today. So Deanna Clays, Molly DeGrave, Julie Bellinger, Christine Reeves, and Denise Fair, will you please stand and be acknowledged because these people, okay. these people truly have the passion, truly have the passion to help people who are affected by addiction, both patients and family members. And I feel so privileged and honored to work with you guys. I know I've told you that a million times, but I'm saying it again publicly. Okay, so thank you. Okay, I also want to shout out to Lisa Berkey, who is my friend and my boss. She hates when I call her my boss. So, um, but I have to do that. Stand up, Lisa, and be acknowledged. She's the executive director of the Greater West Bloomfield Community Coalition. So she's, she's a wonderful asset to our community as well. And I also want to thank my husband, Steve, and my daughter, Stacy, who are here with me tonight. Um, they, they are truly my biggest fans, and I feel so grateful to have them in my lives, in my life. So I am a product of West Bloomfield. I grew up in West Bloomfield, graduated from West Bloomfield High School, and moved back here, went away, to, went away for 10 years, came back in 1995. My daughters graduated from West Bloomfield High School. I feel very connected to this community. And as I look around the room, I see people, I see my former softball teammate, I see the woman who did my mammogram, and... <laughs> Very seriously. Um, so I feel very connected here. So I, I'm very grateful to be a part of this community and working in this community, working for Henry Ford Health System, which is a really great employer. And I just want to thank the Chamber of Commerce for sponsoring this event and giving me this award. It's truly, truly an honor and a privilege to know you and your family. Um, you know, Steve and I have gotten along famously over the years, and uh, we've had our differences of opinion, but that's another subject matter. <laughs> that's, that's probably your, your, never mind, I'm not going to talk about mistakes we make in life, but, but uh, it's my real privilege to uh, present you this, uh, the, the, you know, this uh, special tribute from the state. And I'll just read a little bit on the bottom here, and I'll let you uh, show it to all, all your colleagues and share it with them. Uh, but it's in special tribute, therefore, we congratulate Lisa Kaplan on being honored the Community Excellence Award in, for Health and Wellness. Her devotion to the community is truly admirable. May she know of our warmest wishes and success in all our future endeavors. It's signed by myself, your state senator, Clint Kesto, uh, one of the representatives, Mike uh, McCready, the other one. Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly, Rick Snyder, uh, and it's affixed with the official seal of the state of Michigan. So congratulations on all your hard work. Thank you. That's so nice. Uh, you're more than welcome. And, and from the Chamber of Commerce. Absolutely. This, and this is more important than anything else. Well, thank you very much. And your husband got you this. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. I you're appreciate welcome. it. Okay, uh, can you close with all your medals there? Sure. Here, you want me to hold something? Yeah. Thank you. All right, so the little seriousness part of tonight, um, this next award, the Community Excellence Award for Leadership, um, this person, you're gonna find out a lot about her when she comes up over here, but uh, she went to law school, she's a lawyer, so there we go. Uh, she went to law school in New York, she started doing civil practice, then she eventually transferred back here to Michigan, she works for the Attorney General's office. She's the Assistant Attorney General for Children and Youth Services. Now what that means is she handles what they call abuse and neglect cases. And for lawyers that know or people that know, this is very serious cases. These are cases where kids are abused. And these, some of these cases are just heartbreaking. 
oftentimes these kids are just total victims. And to have someone like our honoree try to get some justice for these people that don't know sometimes they're being abused is really something. So it's a fun night. I'm not going to put it down on it. But this is a serious award, and she deserves this. Now, I asked her, at the end of a day after handling these very tough, these are really hard cases, so what do you do? And then I looked down at her table. She's got two glasses of wine right there. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm just saying. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Elizabeth Schiff Barish, Your Excellence Award Leadership from the Attorney General's Office. I'm truly humbled by this recognition and this honor, particularly from this community where David and I have raised our children, educated our children. Our son, Max, is a sophomore at West Bloomfield High School. Our daughter graduated two years ago, and uh, we've been the beneficiaries of every wonderful service. Uh, education, we've loved the libraries. We take advantage of the trail. There's so much beauty here. And the essence of community is togetherness. And the only way that I feel that I can truly express gratitude for all that's been given to me is to find meaningful work. And that's all I've really wanted to do in my life. So I've done a lot of different things. Uh, but really, I think the key to leadership is, is to lead with heart and perspective. And uh, I know Ms. Larkin here instilled that in my daughter and, and my son. and, and the, the, you know, the chain, the human chain continues, and I'm so proud. I keep a picture of my maternal grandfather on my desk, my beloved grandfather, Max, <clears throat> who was an immigrant, like uh, we are all children of immigrants, and uh, it gives me perspective because, of course, like so many, this is not a unique story, came to this country with nothing and didn't speak the language and, and, and just came with the hope that he could have a better life. And he's standing on the stoop of the first house that he built, and it's, he started his business in 1929. And so I think we would all agree in this room that that wasn't a great year to start a business. <laughs> but he persevered, and that's something I look at. I look at that picture every day, and I really think that that's the key to success is to keep your heart uh, and, your, and your focus forward and to just try your best. And I'm, I'm very humbled by this and um, very, very grateful. And it means so much to me. So thank all of you. I want to thank my family, my husband, my children, my father who is here, who, who instilled the value of education and all things. And that was really the key, to just keep trying. So thank you so much. And I appreciate that. And I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. Elizabeth, I know, I know what you do every day. Uh, we see it from the legislative side. And I can tell you that uh, there's a special place for you in heaven. And it may, may take a long time to get there. <laughs> but um, I know that God is uh, holding you in the palm of his hand. Thank so you. this is from the city of West Bloomfield. That's beautiful. Thank you. And this is the award from the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. So and of course, this is from the state of Michigan. And we, we work very closely with the AG's office on a lot of issues. And these are the toughest. These are the hardest ones to work with, along with human trafficking and everything that goes along with it. So God bless you for doing what you do. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. You have to, you have to hold that for him because he's going to here. I'll hold this. You can hold the, the glass. Yeah. You need a truck to take all okay, this stuff. All right, congratulations. All right, let's move on with our next honoree. This is the Community Excellence Award for Young Entrepreneur of the Year. Do we have any other Young Entrepreneur of the Year award winners in the room? 
Yeah. Stand up. Stand up if you're a neon entrepreneur. Stand up. Re refresh your recollection. What's your business? What's, what, what was your business? Planter. All right. That's where the what? Oh, all right. Very good. How's business? Still good? Okay, good. All right. Yeah. You always, you always want to know the answer to the question before you ask it, just in case. But anyway, all right, let me move on with this. This is very interesting. This is, this, this is a fascinating guy. I saw this name, Eric Klar. It, see, I don't see Eric. Er, I don't know. His name is A-R-I-C. I can't understand this. But he says it's Eric. So his parents, who are here tonight, said, what's the deal? How do you mess this up? And then, he, and then they gave me some double. I don't know. I, don't, I still don't understand it. He'll have to explain it when he comes up. It's a good story. But here's the deal. He is the owner of the Toyology Toys. So you would think that he knows everything about toys, that he's got a favorite toy, that he loves toys, whether it's kites or dolls or what. He hates toys. <laughs> he does not like toys. I don't understand this. But the only thing that's really important, though, he's 29 years old, and he kind of took over some of the family business, and so who's got more money at 21, you or your father? Well, he does. He's got five stores now, one of them in the Orchard Mall. Is that right? Am I supposed to say that? Okay, good. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen this is a very interesting guy. I can't wait to hear him. Eric Clark, the entrep young entrepreneur of the year. Thanks, everybody. Um, those of you who don't know me, I'm Eric Klar. For those of you who do know me, everybody here knows I can talk very fast and for a long time. So I'll keep it slow today. Nice and slow. Um, anyways, um, appreciate being recognized tonight. It means a lot, especially in the community that I grew up in and the community that I was raised in. Um, but what I want to talk about here tonight is why I'm the entrepreneur I am today. And it starts with my parents. Um, they, at a young age, instilled some unique values in me that made me recognize the value of people and family. And today, that is my main focus in business, people and family. So back to Charlie's point, right? Why don't, we don't like toys, what's the deal here? Why are you in this business? Because I'm in the family and people business. If I get people to smile, enjoy, learn, get educated so we can focus on things like fine arts, uh, that's important to me, and that means that my mission is is going and growing. So today, uh, I have five toy stores that I own with my mom and my brother Jonathan, who I would not be up here without them too. Um, my brother always likes to stay in, in the background, make sure that I'm you know, going from A to Z and hitting all the letters on that way. Um, but you know, when it comes down to our family mission, it's about turning vision into direction and making sure that direction is being carried on by people who really care about that vision. And for me, my vision is strong. Um, I want to be a market disruptor in the toy industry. You know, this is a, a very wild space right now, right? The largest toy retailer, Jeffrey the Giant, is gone. And the reason is simple. They didn't create experiences. In today's world, whether you're in high school, you're in school, you're at a hospital, you have to have a killer experience. You know, if I owned Toys R Us, you'd walk in, instead of seeing 799 blue pools, you would see slime making factories. I want Lego competitions. I want things that are gonna bring families out to my business. Not always to spend money, but to make sure that children are always prospering. So if I'm able to do that, my business will constantly grow, and my mission, people, value, and vision and direction will always remain. Thanks, guys. I was told to speak into the mic a little bit better because I... Eric, um, as you were speaking up here, I was looking at you and I was thinking about what's been going on here in the state of Michigan. And uh, Michigan is back. Yes. Michigan's back. <laughs> and Detroit is back. And it's back because of people like you the enthusiastic um, entrepreneur that's not going to take no for an answer 
and you remind me a lot of me when I was 29 years old. I was in business with my family, and um, I see the same enthusiasm in your face as what I've seen in my own face when I looked in the mirror. Now as I'm a little bit older, that enthusiasm's a little bit changed, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's still there. It's just wearing a different coat. But uh, good for you. You know, it just makes me feel good to see people, young people like this, that, that aren't afraid to jump out there and take a chance. And you got a long way to go, and I know that you're going to be extremely successful. So congratulations. Thank you. The West Bloomfield Chamber from the state legislature and from your community, West Bloomfield Township. All right, Eric, thank you. Thank you, Senator. Eric's gonna buy this Toys R Us. I know it, I know it, I know it. Congratulations. There's the picture right there. What are you guys doing? That's the picture right there. That's good. Congratulations. All right, last but not least, anybody in this room, anybody know Kelly Woodley? Anybody know her? Well, if anybody know the Orchard Mall? Whoa. All right, so when it came time that we needed people to support, uh, you know, there's a lot of competition now, internet, and a lot of the, you know, the brick and mortar stores, at least arguably, are going under or cutting down, Toys R Us, because of internet sales. Not the Orchard Mall, no way. And in part, it's because of Kelly Woodley. She really just wants to have fun. She doesn't, you don't have to know, she's the asset manager, she's got a 300,000 square foot feet of retail, blah, blah, blah. She just wants to have fun. And when, and when she gets up here, it is going to be fun. She's also um, a regular now on Let It Rip. We love you on Let It Rip, it's great. Anybody see her? It's great. All right, all that aside, forget all that. It doesn't matter, why? She's most proud of today, it's her third year anniversary today. She has 12 year old twins also. I need that STEM program. I don't understand this, uh, how this works there, Dr. Hill, but whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Kelly Woodley, Chamber Member of the Year. All right, you guys, I wrote this speech last night. It's hard to get up here. It's exciting to get up here and to follow a tenant of ours in the Orchard Mall that's doing so well, who got up here without a speech. But I'm gonna read to you because I want it to be heartfelt. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited to be here that the first thing that I did when I found out that I was receiving this award was I called a bunch of my friends. They're all here. I called. A bunch of the friends that I've made throughout the 10 years that I've been involved in the West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce. And I wanted to invite them here, and I wanted them to be my guests because, after all, those friendships made and business partnerships established are the core of what makes a Chamber of Commerce such a valuable organization to be a part of. Sorry. <laughs> so, as the important asset manager of Orchard Mall, I've had the pleasure of connecting with so many people in this wonderful community. I've connected with all of the local nonprofit organizations, and if I haven't, you find me, please, because all we wanna do is help. Um, the West Bloomfield School District, the local hospitals, parks and recreation, the library, many of the local businesses and business owners. Our Orchard Mall team has done our best to be more than just a shopping center that has walls, a roof, and businesses that are looking to sell goods and to make money. We truly believe in being a community supporter and opening up our doors to engage with the community and to establish Orchard Mall as a place where you want to be. I'm very grateful to the 
West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce, to my fellow board members, to our outstanding executive director, Suzanne Levine. For all that you do for the West Bloomfield community, for all of the support that you give to Orchard Mall as well. I'm honored to have been selected as the Chamber Member of the Year. Gosh, Charlie said I was going to get up here and be fun, but I'm not so fun. <laughs> but it's not my award, it's our award. Because I don't do it by myself, I do it with all of you, and it's, it's all of you that are allowing the West Bloomfield Chamber to continue to grow and allowing our community to continue to thrive and to reach our mission to bring business and the community together. So I'm really honored and I'm thankful. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. But I have one more thing I have to say. Friday, June 8th. <laughs> At the Orchard Mall, we are having our first ever food truck rally, and you all have to be there. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to have food trucks, a beer and wine tent. We're going to have live music. Deputy Chief Kurt Lawson will be there. My friend Kelly Heyer from Parks and Rec will be there. All of my friends will be there. You all have to be there. It's going to be a blast, and it's all to raise money for our local West Bloomfield Youth Assistance Program. So I thank you all. I hope you have a wonderful evening. We've all witnessed this enthusiasm for a long time, you know, and it's all and it's always been greatly uh, appreciated. Sometimes a little, you know, too enthusiastic, but that's okay. I had to follow yeah, Charlie yeah. and Eric. I know. I know. <laughs> Um, I'm going to read a little bit of this one because this is, this is basically the last uh, special tribute that I'm going to read to this chamber as a state senator. And I couldn't think of anybody better to, uh, to read it to than, than to you because I know of all your hard work. Let it be known that it is a distinct privilege to congratulate Kelly Woodsley as she is recognized as the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber Member of the Year. This award is given to exceptional chamber members who donate their time, their effort, their skills, their community to above and beyond what is expected. And they didn't put in their sense of humor, but I would have, so. <laughs> Kelly Woodsley is a high, highly talented and motivated chamber member who is enthusiastically involved in the chamber, her workplace, Southeastern Michigan. She is currently an asset manager and director of property management for the first holding management company in West Bloomfield. Kelly recognizes the importance of fostering mutually beneficial relationships within the community and excels in establishing connections for the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber, where she has served on the board of directors and as a past president. As the asset manager of Orchard Lake Mall, Kelly has been instrumental in hosting numerous events at the mall, supporting member of the local West Bloomfield charitable and nonprofit organizations, these events are essential component of marketing for the retail and the service businesses located within inside the Orchard Mall and have been very effective in establishing the mall as a community destination. Married to her husband Brent, she's a proud hockey mom and dance mom of her <laughs> twin children, Bryden and Ava. Uh, Kelly loves to give back to others when there is an example and, be, and can be seen throughout, and that can be seen throughout the community. In special tribute, therefore, we congratulate Kelly on being the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber Member of the Year. Her devoted devotion to the community is truly admirable. May she know of our warmest wishes of success in all her future endeavors. And it's signed by myself, your state senator, Thank you. Clint Kesto, Mike McCready, uh, Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly and the governor of our great state of Michigan, Governor Rick Snyder. Thank you so, so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sure. That's a more important one. Here, here, hold, hold that. It's a lot, though. No, hold this. That's it? There we go, that's it? That's all she wrote. A big hand for Suzanne here, who coordinated a lot of this. You guys are so much fun. That's the end of the night. Thank you so much. Love it, love it. 
done. Thank you guys. Good night, everyone.